After a long winter, my boyfriend and I decided it was time to head into the countryside to our favorite Airbnb to cook, relax, and escape the busy city. For me, as soon as the weather starts warming, I always crave heading out for a road trip. Something about hitting the empty road sets my heart on fire and makes me feel free to follow it wherever it wants to take me. To make sure we got to spend more time on the road and fit in as much adventure as possible, we decided to check out some of the 11 monasteries in the Chachuk area. But first, no trip to Chachuk is complete without first eating some of the best Kachenia Serbia has to offer. As always, I managed to find a super adorable pup outside. You're so cute! Oh my goodness! Hi, and Harvey. even though it was so hard to leave him, he patiently waited for us to finish our food so that he could get some snacks too. We ordered lamb sarma and veal soup, and even though I honestly didn't love the lamb, the soup was absolutely delicious. Afterwards, we finished it off with some classic pig pechenya, and oh, afterwards, I had some snacks to deliver. Me. He was so excited. Safe to say, he thinks cold brana deserves the title of best pechenya in the country, too. And we were back on the road, ready to continue on with our adventure. Everyone I've met from Chachuk is always super proud of their city and driving through the surrounding area, I completely understood why. The mountains and river were absolutely beautiful and actually reminded me a lot of Canada. The monasteries in the area were all nestled in the mountains and resting on their peaks and I couldn't wait to check them all out. I'm not gonna lie, the drives to the monasteries rivaled the monasteries themselves. They were all perfectly located in the most serene locations and driving there was such a trip because we were going through all of these little tunnels through the mountains. Our first stop was Monastery Nicolie. Being right on the river, it was definitely my boyfriend's favorite. He is a Scorpio and this man is just in love with water and all of the negative ions that running water provides. One of my favorite things about all the monasteries that we checked out were the resident guests. Everyone either had a dog or a super adorable cat and they were always snoozing well fed and you could tell that they just got a lot of love. With the birds tripping, I can only imagine the level of peace and quiet that you could experience living in a place like this. Each monastery creates their own tinctures, rakia, and this one even made its own flower that they sell to help fund their living costs. Finally, it was time to check out the church. Made in the 15th century, the church was absolutely gorgeous and I was blown away by all the little details which are original to its design. You'd never guess that all these details are waiting on the other side of such a simple door. Afterwards, it was back in the car to drive through more of these super spooky tunnels through the mountains on our way to our most highly anticipated monastery, Uspanye. Our friend had told us that it wasn't usually open to the public, but we had seen it on top of Mountain Ovskarko Koblarsko. Don't judge me for that pronunciation, I know it was horrible. And we just had to go and check it out for ourselves. The view was absolutely amazing. Unfortunately though, our friend was right and this monastery is only open to the public for mass on Saturdays. So it was back into the tunnels for us to head to our Airbnb. A couple days later, the sun was shining and we decided that it was time to check out a few more of the monasteries in the area. Literally, this is one of the nicest days that we've had all year and I swear my mood is just a hundred times better when the sun is shining and when there are adorable sheep and lamb on the side of the road for me to check out. It gave me the full Serbian experience. This is Monastery Sretenje and before I even got out of the car, I was already in love. After getting a drink of the monastery spring water, it was time to head in and go explore. 
this monastery was actually women only and here you'll see the only male running away from me. Out of respect for the nuns, I didn't want to take any photos or videos of them, but literally when we walked in, there was a nun that was using scissors to trim all of the grass around the pavement. When I say that this place was mint, I mean that this place was mint. Like, absolutely so gorgeous. Aside from getting this video of me and my boyfriend lighting candles to commemorate the dead, And a couple short clips of the church itself. I actually didn't get a ton of videos here and that is because one of the nuns, shout out to Katerina, who was seriously an earth angel, one of the nicest people I've ever met, invited us to come and drink coffee and eat this delicious sugary treat and sit and relax in the sun for a little while. You can see here that I was not appropriately dressed, so she gave me this tiny little skirt to wear while we were hanging out. And honestly, it was such a beautiful experience. When me and my boyfriend left, like all we could talk about was just how sweet she was, how beautiful it was. I was really blown away. Afterwards, we headed to Monastery Svete Troitse, but unfortunately we got a little too close to closing, so we couldn't go in. And then we ended our journey off at a monastery called Vavadenye. As you can see here, they of course had a cute little resident cat that was running around, unfortunately did not want any cuddles. But once again, an absolutely beautiful yard and was located in the middle of these hills here. This is where I ended up getting the best shots of the church itself. I don't know if they had ended up doing any more recent upgrades here, but I found that all of the painting was a lot more crisp. In one area, which I think you'll be able to see in just a minute here, the blue was so blue. Um, if this was a monastery that was built in the 15th century and all of the colors were still this crisp, I would be very, very impressed, but either way, it was just absolutely stunning. There's something that's just so awe-inspiring about being in these kinds of places. We finished off our trip, filling up all of our water with spring water. Every monastery, for some reason, had these little taps and some spring-fed water. I don't exactly know why that is. If anyone that is watching this video knows and wants to tell me in the comments, I would really appreciate it because um, I was really confused as to why that is, but you best believe that I took like four gallons home with me and I am still to this day <laughs> drinking that water. I absolutely loved it. Afterwards, we enjoyed a beautiful drive to the country <laughs> until we stopped off in Thub to hang out with a couple of our friends. The land surrounding Oob was seriously so beautiful, I never wanted to leave, and then we made our way back to the city.